Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to this week's episode. We're going to be discussing body positivity and eating disorders. If this might be a sensitive or uncomfortable topic for you, please go check out another one of our episodes to hear about diabetes and join the conversation. Thank you and enjoy. This is the Just My Track Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Sing it, girl. Here we go. Hello, hello, around the block and around the world in triplicate sense around and stereo. This is where we discuss, debate, sing, and deliberate all things diabetes. Representing type two, my name is Dobie Maxwell, very out of tune. Representing type one, grooving in her big booty remix, the vivacious, effervescent, and always in the know, Ms. Sammy Parker. Today's episode of JMT. Sammy, who's it brought to you by? The Diabetes App. That's right. It's a free social community app that brings together both type 1 and type 2 diabetics, plus their supporters find community, resources, funky music, and Sammy and me on the Diabetes App. Sammy, as always, we're going to be focusing on the positive today, body positivity. No pun intended. Well, pun intended if you like (laughs) to have it, but uh, I think it's a good thing to do because this could be a very difficult issue for many people with diabetes. Yes, I think diabetes and body positivity is a huge topic, and unfortunately, I think it's not talked about as much as it should be. And I'm sure everybody, even girls and guys would agree with me. I think honestly, a lot of guys actually struggle with it too that have diabetes, but a lot of times it's thought that it's only girls. So I think it's an exciting episode today. And yeah, I'm excited to see what you have to say. Equal opportunity positivity here, because you're right, it is. It's it's hard enough to deal with diabetes. We all want to look like Mr. or Ms perfection. And uh, that's hard enough anyway. So uh, let's start it off. So I think something that's really interesting for those of you that don't know, you might have heard of it. You might not have any idea what I'm even about to say. But diabulimia is a very, very, very common issue with those living with diabetes. And diabulimia basically is when someone dealing with type 1 diabetes stops taking their insulin in order to lose weight. Mm. And the reason for this is that, so insulin itself does not cause weight gain, but a lot of times the more insulin that you have in your body, basically it allows more glucose to be entered in, which then is just stored as fat storages. So insulin in turn can cause weight gain if you're taking an excessive amount and it's storing away fat or like fructose sugars, which is simpler sugars. So if you're insulin resistant, a lot of times you have a lot of inflammation going on in the body and then you're taking a ton of insulin and you're insulin resistant, which means it's not really working. So in turn, you just have a lot of inflammation. It's storing fat in your body a lot quicker. It's not utilizing it properly. You have high blood sugars. And so therefore it can lead to weight gain. And that is where diabulimia comes in. And unfortunately, it's really sad, but I know a lot of diabetics that have struggled with diabulimia. I even knew a couple in high school and they just wouldn't take their insulin because they didn't want to gain weight. And when you don't take your insulin and your blood sugars are high, you're in this thing called ketosis, which means basically you are peeing out sugar and like protein. And it's really, really, really dangerous. Ketones are not a healthy thing to have, but you lose weight. And that is, of course, what people want. So if you're peeing out the sugar, it means you're going to be low, I would think. No, you'll be really high, but your body's taking such a hard hit Mm -hmm. because your blood sugars are so high. It's like when you're diagnosed, you aren't doing well, you are going to the bathroom a lot, you're drinking a ton of water, you lose weight. So that's what basically they're doing. They want to go back into what happened when they were being diagnosed because they don't want to deal with the weight gain. Wow. And I I see why that would happen, but Mm -hmm. a red flag, not healthy. No. And it's really, it's really sad because... I definitely struggled in high school with, honest, I think it was like sophomore year for me. And I struggled with weight gain, with insulin. And I had my doctor and he'd be like, no, insulin doesn't cause weight gain. Which, and now I know that if I'm insulin sensitive and I'm taking insulin and my blood sugars are good, it doesn't matter how much insulin I take. It's not going to cause me to, to gain weight. But I am aware that depending how I'm eating, depending what insulin I'm taking, if I'm insulin resistant, it does cause weight gain in a way, specifically depending on like different variables. But... I struggled with it in high school, sophomore and junior year, like really badly. These are times in in life where you're at your most active. So I'm sure you were dancing and doing all the activities. I was dancing nonstop. I never didn't take my insulin. I always took my insulin. It was definitely a struggle. Like I was more just like 
this is annoying. I didn't let myself ever even think to not take insulin, but it just was so frustrating. So the line and the boundary there between dealing with that and then dealing with diabulimia, it's very common and you can see how it transitions to that level. You think having somebody, whether it's your parents getting on you or, or an endocrinologist or somebody or, or a, a group of diabetic friends to say, hey, is this happening? Because if you're by yourself, like I was type two by myself, I didn't have anybody to consult. I saw my doctor once in a while, but this is easy to get off the wagon is my point. Yes. So something I think that is interesting is as much as a support system is great, I think surrounding yourself with others that have diabetes is even better because they're holding you accountable because they deal with hint, it. Hint, hint. That's why we're here. Exactly. That's right, Sammy. <laughs> exactly, Doby. We are here. You support me and I support you. One big happy family. Well, but our listeners too is what I'm saying. Yes. Either type one or type two, these are things that happen on both sides of the coin. Yeah. And I think it's really hard to deal with the fact of like your body's changing and especially even guys. Like I, I know guys that are like, oh, because with diabetes, no matter what, it makes physical changes. When you get diagnosed and you start taking insulin, you'll notice some physical changes. It's inevitable. We're human. Our bodies change. We change, you know, and which I'm sure you've seen like you, I'm sure are way healthier than you were when you first got diagnosed. Night and day, not the same person. I am ashamed of my other person, how unhealthy that I was. See, and so, and for you, it's like body positivity, it's so important because I'm sure, did you ever get tough, hard on yourself during that time period? Did you feel like physically great or did you feel like you were bummed and wish you were maybe like more fit or more, um, felt more confident? Did you ever? Well, I was always an, an athlete. I was, as a kid and you know, kids, you just work out, exercise more. Yeah. All and then as I got into comedy, it was a night and day switch. Okay. I'm in my twenties. You can still get away with it. You're still to that point in your twenties, but then you start hitting 30, 35, 40, and I'm eating the same way that I did. And I'm putting on pounds and I'm not feeling well. And I'm driving eight hours to work a 45-minute shift. So exercise is not a part of that. So it's a cumulative effect, which took years to happen. And one day I wake up and I'm diagnosed with thinking, this is not what I expected. Yeah. Were you, um, I, I mean, I don't know if this is too personal of a question, but did you weigh more than you do now when you were diagnosed? Uh, you know what? I didn't really make a point to kick my weight. Okay. But again, living the comedian and Wisconsin and Midwestern lifestyle and the super slurpy supper, big, whatever they call it, big gulp. I mean, it's always a 50 cents to go supersize. And it adds up over years, which go by really fast. And the next thing I know, it's like, I'm a slob, <laughs> you know? And, yeah. and you're hard on yourself. And it, it's tough for guys. It is tough for women too. I think that's one thing that's it's equal in that we all want to look good. We all want to feel good. But sometimes feeling good temporarily, eating things we don't, or just being lazy, the next thing you know, it's, it, it's got to be a process. Totally. And that's what both of us are doing and hopefully turning the listeners on to it as well. And I think that with eating disorders, it's so difficult because diabetes is manageable, obviously. Mm -hmm. But- there's a lot of factors that are out of your control. I actually just put this meme on my Instagram and it was like, calculating insulin be like, and there's like a two plus two equals four. And I said, that's like the expectation. Like, oh, we're just taking insulin, you know, eating healthy. Mm -hmm. And then the reality is like, and then it's like a picture of like this girl doing like calculus. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, that is actually what it is because you're not just calculating, oh, there's 50 carbs and I take one unit for every 10 carbs. So that's five units. No. It's like, okay, here's the carbs. Now, what exercise did I do? How much did I sleep? Am I stressed? Did I do this? Did I do that? Did I get, I don't know, did I drink enough water? Like there's so many different factors and components sure. that I think with diabetes, when you are out of control in any way and you're trying to control your weight and your body and you want to be able to look a certain way, not being able to control that because of diabetes, the car management leads basically to, I feel like, this excessive desire for control. And it's really hard because you can't have that. Like you can, but that kind of control leads to perfectionism, which is oftentimes associated with eating disorders and body positivity or a lack of body positivity. Boy, you know, that's so complicated. It's, it's like we always have a, a, a shrink show or like we're Dr. Phil trying to get on the, people's uh, psychological, but it is a psychological motivator. You know, it's it's a hard thing and we all want self-esteem. You want to be told, the last thing you want to say, oh, are you putting on weight? Oh, you, you look like you gained a couple pounds. Yeah. Well, don't you exercise? Oh, you feel like crap. Then I see why that happens. Totally. Yeah. I mean, like there's a lot of celebrities with type 2 diabetes. And um, I think it's, it's Tom Cruise, but that's type 2. Okay. Am I wrong? Yeah, I thought I thought he had, he has one of them. Maybe he's got gestation. I swear, oh, I swear name. it's Tom Cruise. I'm looking right now. Tom Cruise. I'm pretty sure he does. 
Yes, it's type 2 diabetes. Okay. And it's crazy to me because, no, 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 not Tom Cruise. See, I do this every time. Tom Hanks. I swear Tom Hanks, I did Tom this. Tom Cruise, Tom Thumb. Okay. I swear I did this. Like when we were talking about celebrities in like past episodes, it's Tom Hanks, my bad. But he has type 2 diabetes. And so I think it's hard when you see, like a lot of people, you see different celebrities that have type 2 and they're thin right? Mm -hmm. So Tom Hanks is thin. Yeah. So somebody struggling with type 2 diabetes might be like, well, why do they have type 2 diabetes and they're thin, right? So automatically it's like, oh, they must just not eat a lot. So you also see a lot of type 2s because there's this mental association between weight gain and type 2 that they're just not going to eat that much. They're just going to cut back on eating, but not like a healthy cut back, like a, I'm just going to like not eat and see what happens. Like a starvation diet, a dramatic, drastic change, which is never good. Nope. You know, you walk past these these magazines at the grocery store and the, and the checkout counter, you know, lose 87 pounds in four days. And it's like, how can they keep cranking that stuff out? Exactly. And you see it every every other week, if not every week. If a Kardashian is not going through marital troubles, you see one of these miracle diet things in there. And you want to write to those people and saying, you're just, you're adding mm-hmm. fuel to the fire of negativity. Yeah. Because people think, you know, if I drink one teaspoon of vinegar and I'm going to, abs- you know, I'm going to lose one butt cheek and weight in three days. Not realistic. Exactly. And I don't know, Dobie. Um, so in our episode that we had with Sarah Moback, mm-hmm. everybody, you should go listen to it. But we talked about body positivity and how the over control of diabetes and yes. wanting that perfect number, even if it's not about the body part, like sometimes it might not even be about the weight at all. It might just be about the numbers. And you're so want that perfect line or that perfect A1C or as a type two, if you don't check your blood sugar every day and you go into the doctor in between those periods, you're going to be like, I just have to be perfect with my blood sugars. And in turn, it creates this other issue with your body because now you're focusing on being perfect that you're not eating, which in turn then creates obviously issues with the body. But it's sad and it sucks. I hate that it's associated with diabetes because I think it's the the number one disease that involves the most in terms of exercise, nutrition, and being so in tune with your body. Yeah, I think it's also a blessing in a way that you are in tune with your body because we all change throughout our lives. And every day, every week, every season is different. But it's also, it's like, oh, can I have a vacation? A little little vacation. No, it's constant, daily, day in, day out, year in, year out. Exactly. For a lifetime. No, I agree. Because I think it's, there has to be room for acceptance and grace and like thankfulness too. Like, okay, I deal with diabetes, but my body... My body is good. My body loves me. Navigating the diabetes world can often be overwhelming, but there's many resources available to help you live life to the fullest with peace of mind, both you and your family. That's why I wear my American Medical ID so that I can safely go out and about and enjoy life to the fullest. American Medical ID, an employee-owned company, specializes in custom engraved medical ID jewelry in a variety of styles for all ages, activity levels, and interests. With life getting back to normal, a personalized medical ID indicating you have diabetes can help in an emergency if you are unable to communicate with first responders. Everyone is different. You may be insulin dependent, while others may have medication allergies or other medical needs in addition to diabetes. Personalizing a medical ID for you is something all those with diabetes should consider. An American medical ID can help. At least for me, I got my bracelet with pearls so that it fits with whatever I wear and it keeps me safe at all times. Visit AmericanMedical-ID.com today and get 15% off your order. Use code SAMI, that's S-A-M-I, at checkout. The Diabetes app is an online community platform that was created to help people living with diabetes find support and information in one spot. On the Diabetes app, you can join groups and connect with other people all over the world and find tips that actually make a difference. And now, while you're using the app, you can collect points and earn rewards. Wait, wait, wait. You're confusing me. What do you mean? What I mean is the Diabetes app now gives you points anytime you like, comment, or post. You can collect these points and exchange them for rewards. We're talking promo codes, accessories, and more free gifts. Whoa, I like the sound of that. So you're saying I can earn free rewards just for doing what I already do? That's exactly what I'm saying. Keep using the Diabetes app, connect with others, find tips, and get rewarded for doing so. Well, hopefully somebody loves us, Sammy. I mean, we love talking about this. And and, and if you're listening and you're newly diagnosed, please go back and listen to some of our other episodes because we talk about a lot of things that are just so overwhelming to somebody that first gets it. I know we get new listeners all the time and we appreciate every one of you, but this is an ongoing thing. We're not going to fix it in one 30-minute exercise walk, which we'd all love to do, but taint legit. I mean, it's just not, not realistic. No, I think too, it's like, 
something else too with body positivity is for type one and type two, because type two is where continuous glucose monitors as well. I think that's something that is not even so much on the weight side, but just body positivity, like repping the devices. So for like Dexcom or Freestyle Libre, like you want to rep the device and be like, yeah, I'm wearing a CGM baby and I'm proud of it and confident. And I think that's something that needs to be, I think our community has gotten a lot better, but I do think it needs to be more like, look at me, I'm repping it. Because I think people can feel insecure with it. And I hate to say it, but now social media sucks because like everywhere you turn, there's people on Instagram and they are editing pictures and editing their faces. Like it's just, it's one big edit fest. And so I think girls and guys can be scrolling and scrolling like, why don't I look like that? Or why don't I look like this? Or why do I have this on my body? And there's a girl, what's her name? Lila Moss. I think it's what, Kate Moss's daughter? Okay. Kate Moss is a daughter? Yeah, she's a daughter, Lila Moss. Boy, I, I remember Kate Moss was young. Yes, okay. You know, she's like kind of a, a waif. Now, now she's got a kid. Yes, and her daughter is type one. And her daughter wears her Omnipod on her leg and wears it when she models, like walks down the aisle, like runway. Oh, that's very cool. And I love it. I respect that. I do too. It's so cool because I think so many girls see it and they're like, oh my gosh, like she wears hers and she's a runway model, you know? I'm too sexy for my glucose monitor. I'm too sexy for my... I forget the lyrics, but it's a good song. Right said Fred. Yeah. Maybe I'm going to wear one on, uh, on my forehead on stage. I think you should. I'm try to set a new trend. Yeah. No, seriously, we make jokes about it, but that's really... That's, uh, I think it's courageous of her, gutsy of her to do that. Yeah. It doesn't hurt us as a diabetic community that more and more people have diabetes. So it's, you, you see it more. It's, I wish it wasn't more part of an ongoing mainstream life, but it's just, it's going to be. Exactly. If we don't change our diet and exercise, it's just inevitable. Yeah. And I think even like taking shots in public, like it's, yes, is that more of like an embarrassment thing? Sure. But it has to do with body positivity because it's like, if you're confident in your body and you're like, I'm feeling hot, way too sexy for my, and I'm kidding. Then it's like, you need to just take the shot, feel good. Who cares if you have your pump on you and people can see your port? I don't care. Be confident, be body positive. And I think loving who you are. And I mean, for me, I believe like God designed everybody a certain way. And I know it could be anybody. It can be a higher being. It can just be if you're not spiritual or what, whatever you want. But however you think, like we are created for a reason. And I believe we were. So it's like, I think embrace each other and embrace who you are and love your body. You know, you only got one. You only got one in this particular lifestyle, whether there's reincarnation or not. Do you think there is? I don't know about you. I don't want to come back here. <laughs> it's all these billions and zillions of stars. If there's reincarnation, I want to go to Uranus, Pluto, Neptune, some oh, other solar Venus. system. Are you kidding? No, I'm kidding. Venus, men are from Mars, women are from Venus, diabetics are from... Dexcom, yes. Planet 6. I don't know. <laughs> no, but I think, I really think, like, my favorite line is treat your body like a temple. Yeah, but I think most people, I can't speak for the world, but in America, and I'm in America, and our parent companies in Canada love Canadians. Americans treat their body like a rental car. They'll wreck it. They don't care. There's nothing invested in it. And if, if I wreck it, I'll just get, I'll right. get a boob job. I'll get a plastic surgery. I'll get a tummy tuck. You're right. And it used to not be like that. No, it wasn't like that for centuries, not just years. And all of a sudden with the technology, I think people are misusing it yes. you know, and, and you get all the, the disorders that go with it. It's like, okay, well, if you really need some kind of cosmetic surgery, if you're burned in a fire, that's one thing. But just because you got a couple of crow's feet, you're going to get your face rebuilt like the engine in a car. Is that a little bit, uh, I don't know, off the deep end in my opinion, but it doesn't mean I'm right. No, I mean, it's, it's very, very, very true though. And I think even like, okay, so you have like diabulimia, you know? And that one's like such a common one of like, they're just not taking insulin because they want to like lose weight. But the other one that is like such a big one too is anorexia with diabetes. Oh yeah. I, I mean, I'm sure you can assume why. Okay, I can see that too. You like, if you feel like you're gaining weight, then you're like, I'm just gonna literally not even have to do with insulin, but you'll still take your insulin, but you just won't eat anything. And that one scares me so bad because it's it's such a bummer to me that there's this connotation around like diabetes specifically that you, if you take insulin or whatever, you're just not going to be how you want to look. And I think that's something that like I've realized, like I'm going to, I want to look this way and I'm going to take my insulin. I'm going to go off on a, on a tangent here, but it's got a purpose. Do you know who Wayne Dyer is? I don't know. I've heard of him. Dr. Wayne Dyer. A lot of people listening might not know who it is. 
he was a big self-help guru. He passed away now. I absolutely loved his stuff. And I would listen to his, uh, Your Erroneous Zones was his very first book. But he had all kinds of recorded uh, audio, video. But he was bald. And he said, my hair started falling out when I was in my 20s. And guys are very, you know, we all are narcissistic kind of about how we look. And he said he talked to a friend of his and he said, nobody cares that you're bald. He goes, go up to 10 people, ask him, do you care that I'm bald? No. And he said, I went up to 10 people and all 10 said, no, they don't care. So the same thing. How does your body look? Is it too fat? Is it too skinny? Is it too whatever? Nobody cares. You know what I'm saying? So if you love yourself, like you say, it's it's easier said than done. I think we try too hard to get the approval of others. Oh, for sure. It's even like, okay, like how you said, you want to reach a certain level and a certain goal and a certain point. And that's why like, mm-hmm. you know, A1C, which is your hemoglobin A1C. So you're basically your average of your blood sugars over 90 days. And in order for people to reach that perfect number and be like, yes, I made it. I'm perfect. And my blood sugars are perfect. People like limit, for example, carbs, healthy carbs. Like they won't eat healthy carbs. They'll be on a low carb diet for better management and better control, which I'm not saying is wrong because I did that for a very long time. It works, but you shouldn't have to. And now I eat carbs. Like I'm so happy. I like am able to actually eat like healthy carbohydrates, like quinoa, rice, beans, fruit. But people limit that for this like restrictive aspect to reach this certain goal, like this number. It's like they see an A1C and they think it's like, I don't know, they think it's like heaven or something. Like A1C equals heaven. <laughs> like if you make it past that line, it's like you're going there, baby. You're going straight there. Straight there. I'm taking you off this a deep end. Again, I think it's human nature. Like, okay, you get your credit card down to zero. That's a big thing. Got to get it to zero, get it to zero. And you sacrifice six months, a year, two years, whatever it is. What's the first thing you do? I'm going out to dinner to celebrate and I'm putting it on the credit card. Same thing. Everybody's ideal weight is not the same. Everybody's A1C is not the same. So I got this particular, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to stop exercising. I'm going to enjoy, I'm going to have a chocolate shake, whatever it is that's your celebration. Yeah. So I think it's, it's you know, hitting that number, it's good to want to get healthier. But like like you just said, going to that, that magic number is not a magic number. It isn't. No, and I think that's why it gets... So bad because this controlling aspect comes in and controlling mm-hmm. turns into an eating disorder and an eating disorder then turns, it just is, it's like one vicious cycle and it's just not healthy. And I think like specifically the fact that we even have this thing called A1C, that's why I don't like it. I think, I mean, we have, I like what it's called time and range, which hopefully we'll talk about later on in episodes, but it shouldn't be focused on like this one number. And like, if you don't exceed that number, then you suck. I'm managing diabetes. Like, because that's a crappy way of looking at it. Would you not agree, though, there's a fine line between just being lazy and letting it the chips fall where they may and being overzealous and, like you said, a perfectionist, uh, maybe OCD. I don't want to use the wrong terms that offend people. Yeah. But sometimes you need an offensive. You need to get kicked in the butt, say, hey, pull it back, or hey, come on now, step it up a little bit. No, I mean, I, like, I can totally say that. I don't think it's offensive at all. People deal with OCD where you're, like, obsessive over it and— you have to count out exactly the amount. Of, like, there's so many different things and they're not bad. So I don't even think it's offensive. Like, I deal with anxiety, obviously. So for me, it's like, I will get really, I don't know. I get like anxious almost if I'm like getting in my head about weight or food and I can't help it. And people, I think what's funny is like, a lot of times people are like, why are you worried about your weight? And I'm like, it's it's actually like not even my weight right now. It's just the second I take, like, if I'm taking like 12 units of insulin for like my 24 hour mm-hmm. and then it goes up to 15, like, I know that when that happens, that means that I'm like gaining a little bit of weight or like I've been eating a surplus of calories sure. than what I was because you need more insulin for the more calories typically. So I'm like, automatically what happens is my head goes, okay, so I'm taking more insulin, which means I've been eating more calories, which now means I'm going to gain weight, which means now I'm going to have my anxiety again. It's not even like about necessarily like the weight itself. Yeah, It's just anxiety that is centered around insulin, the carbohydrates, the caloric intake and it's hard. It's you struggle with it. Like I try to separate my brain, but sometimes I'm like, holy. Freak. But it is a trigger, and and then I think it's dominoes fall, and you're right back into the shiz, as you say, not good. Right back into the shiz, and that's why it's all about being positive. <laughs> I think the whole point of this episode was body positivity, and so we talked about all the shiz and crap there is. But I think what we really want to focus on is like be positive, love your body. Amen. How can we do that? There's a variety of ways. Number one, like enjoy a walk. Just go on a walk. I know we say that all the time, but like enjoy your body. Like remember you have limbs that you're allowed to move with. Like, or you have, like you're able to do anything. (laughs) You can 
just chill and be like, I deserve a day to relax. I will say this because we have done the show together enough as we're recording this. This is my 55th day in a row of 10,000 steps or more. It took me a few weeks before that to get up to 10,000. This is not bragging or boasting, but it's like it's been part of the positivity from the pod squad, uh, Elizabeth and Zach and all our team members and you. But I had the desire myself to get out there and shake my booty. It's a big booty remix every day. And now yeah. my roommate says, going for your walk today. I see people at my bank. I live in a small town and there's not a whole lot of businesses, but there's a bank about two miles away where I do my banking. I go in there. They tell, hey, saw you walking. Did your car break down? They're joking about me. Then a couple of, I saw you walking again. I show my, oh, it took 10,000 steps. So it, it is a snowball. Yeah. And I think if you listen to our, to JMT, we love you for that. Get inspired. Go out in your own world. And like I said, walk. Yeah. If it's a good day, walk outside. If it's a bad day, walk in a mall. Take them, you know, if you're younger. I, I look at myself as I'm the youngest of the old farts. I go to the mall and I see I could kick anybody's butt in this mall. I don't want to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you got to put something in your head that's positive and it's a snowball effect. Yeah. And you have to be proud of yourself and diabetes because it's made you who you are. You should love your body. You should be like, yeah, I own this shiz. <laughs> I was designed this way and I love it. And I love diabetes. I got to tell you that exactly. I'm glad you brought that up because I say that with my friends all the time. They say, are you doing that diabetes podcast? What are you, you just doing it for the money? It's like, well, you know what? I mean this, I shouldn't say this out loud, but I mean, I would do this if they weren't. This is something that it has changed my life in a positive way. I oh, am happy I have totally. diabetes. I wouldn't have met you. I wouldn't have met the pod squad. The people we're going to meet when we start doing live appearances. This is a community, and I am proud of it. I'm proud of all of us that have it and struggle with it every day. Type 1, type 2, gestational, pre-diabetes. It doesn't matter. We are a community, and we're still human, and we can lift each other up. So that's good. Exactly. And the, the community I have met through diabetes and, like, diabetes Instagram, our team that we have here, and, like, you, like, it's, so out of this world. And so I think being positive and just grateful for your body and being able to breathe every day is such an important part. And I think something for me that has been really helpful with body positivity is like, what's one part of my body? Like, I'll think like one, I don't know, once a month, like what's one body part that I'm like, I love this body part, which I think that's, that can be our question of the pod. It can be, okay, question of the pod. What's your favorite part of your body? Mm -hmm. Favorite part of my body. Dilby. Are you asking me or are you throwing that out there rhetorically? Yeah, I'm asking you. That is the question of the pod, but I'm also asking you. My left hand. I am left-handed my whole life. That's a whole other we could I don't know if you're you're not left-handed. That's another community. It's 10% of the population. Diabetes, I don't know what the percentage is actually, but uh, I, I am left-handed. People tend to be more creative. So I'm proud of my left hand because I'm left-handed. How about you? What's your favorite body part? I don't know. Um, you got to think about it. Core, like the core, like so your abdomen muscles, because I, lo I love doing ab exercises because I like the burn. Sounds weird, but I love, I love the burn. So I love doing abs. So I'm like, I, I don't get that from doing any other exercise. Like, I don't like have this like, oh, yes, I love doing it. Like, obviously I do it, but it's not like I'm like, yes. And I love doing ab exercises. I get like really excited. So that's cool. I'm going to ask Elizabeth, our Queen Bee pod squad leader, what is her favorite part? And, and answer us too. Her, her eyes. She has, she has very beautiful eyes. Yes, that's a good one. I love that. And they, they point in the same direction and they're the same color, which is all good. Very beautiful. Zach, eyes. what's yours? Yeah, Zach is our... Uh, Fantastic intern. Sure, they're green eyes. Oh, Elizabeth has green eyes. Zach's are also his uh, eyes. Zach will kill her. Wow. Eye. I think you might have stole that from Elizabeth. That's okay. Answer us. How can people get a hold of us, Sammy? Because we are uh, we are on a mission to have community with our listeners. We appreciate every one of you. So first, please give us a five-star rating and review. We would love to hear it and love to get the diabetes community together. So go on Apple Podcasts or Spotify and leave us a review, please and thank you. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at just my type pod underscore Facebook at just my type pod and our hashtag just my type pod. And yeah. But please answer that question. What's your favorite part of your body? We want to know. Tell us, share it. We love everybody part, but we want to hear your favorite. We want to hear your favorite. Also, uh, if you're new to us, we appreciate you. Go back and listen to our past episodes. We have some outstanding guests. Uh, Sammy and I have had some really good uh, diabetic uh, chat back and forth, type one or type two. So just make yourself at home. Stay a while. And Sammy, let's put a sugar-free cherry. No, no, I forgot it. A, a, a organic cherry on a sugar-free Sunday for this time. Hey, lobby, baby. This is the Just My Type podcast.